Are you serious? I've got a fire in my eyes. I'm burning brighter than the sunlight. You work is straight in my escape. Now I'm awake. I feel alive for the first time. You ignite the fire in my eyes. Hello, foes. Welcome, welcome to one more edition of our show, the Brother Marcos Radio Show, broadcasting through the airwaves and the data flow of Kapow Radio Network and Radio Redemption Network, directly straight to all parts of the world, yes, all people in every continent, as far as I know, listen to this show, you know. And, uh, and I'll tell you, by the mercy of Jesus Christ, because if we talk about Jesus Christ, that's, that's our only objective here, is, is really to draw people closer to Jesus Christ if they already know him. And if you do not know him, we want you to realize your desperate need to come to know the salvation that Jesus Christ provides for your soul. Yes, that's what we do right here. And, um, and I'll tell you, that's also the reason for the subject of the show. We're going to talk about the satanic spiritual formation. And I'll tell you, my friends, this is a very important subject because some people think that, that during the, you know, as we approach the end times, people would would become all atheists they would be materialists they would not really believe in the spiritual world but that's not true it's actually the contrary as people they they realize that all this rat race and all this you know the, the, this this fight this battle for material things are not really leading nowhere they start to realize that they, they have a, a need for spiritual things, for peace. And, but the Bible, the problem is that the Bible says that nobody, nobody seeks God. Nobody, my friends. What people want is, basically, they want peace. They want peace of mind. They want a more balanced life. They want less stress. They want less guilt. And so they start looking for spiritual solutions, okay? And not actually, they're not actually looking for God. Because if you're looking for God, God, what would you do? You would say, let me first try to understand if God talked talk to us, if he really said something to humankind, and I will try to follow that. And then you would follow what God has taught us, okay? And that would be seeking God. That would be looking for God. But no, when you really create, when you invent a God of your own, you're not looking for God. And that's what people are doing right now. And I will, I will say more. People actually, actually, when, when they're you know, looking for those answers. I don't think that, that most people would go straight to occultism or to, or to, you know, spiritism, witchcraft, because those things are, are very, um, you know, they are very extreme. And most people, they are not radical. They only want some kind of peace, peace of mind, strength for, for, you know, for the challenges of the daily life. Because our daily life is becoming more and more difficult. We don't have, we don't have support of families. Uh, you know, nobody even knows who the, the next, next door neighbor is. So we're basically alone in this world. It's a jungle. It's a rat race. Okay? 
But I don't think that most people, they would jump right into Satanism or, you know, some kind of heavy occultism, even though some do. And that's why spiritual formation is so dangerous, okay? Because people, what they do is that they taste and they use just a little witchcraft, okay? Just enough to give them a feeling of well-being, of security, of connection, a false connection with God, and a peace of mind, okay? To just easy is the guilt of their consciousness or the conscience okay so they want that they 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 want you know to just feel lighter lighter and uh, and that's that's the big big danger because you know many people will not realize that they're dealing with witchcraft and sometimes even people who really know the lord but I think that, that the danger, you know, the real danger resides with people who really are starting to understand the gospel, but they have not yet accepted Jesus Christ as Savior. And if they become involved in churches, especially with this kind of spiritual formation heresy, they will just think that these practices are are enough for them, you know, to save them, to save their souls, to be in contact with God. And they may never realize the need to receive Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior and to accept the sacrifice at the cross for them. And if they don't do that, my friends, they're, they will go to hell, you know. Let's be blunt here. Let's let's tell the truth as it is. You know, meditating about God will not take you to heaven. It will send you to hell. Okay? If you do not really accept Jesus Christ. And there is the danger that that will happen with those people. Okay? Because this, which is basically Eastern mysticism, as we are going to see in a minute, is being done and is being taught inside the churches okay yes my friends uh, we know okay we know that that there is a battle there is a battle yes as we approach the end times as you know there is a separation be between the wheat and the tares the sheep and the goats okay there will be a separation among the religions. We're going to see biblical Christianity against all the religions of the world ganged up together against Christianity. Because what does Christianity teach us? Okay? Basically, the Bible tells us that we are lost because of sin. We are all children of Aden or Adam. Okay? And Adam his sin, okay, when he disobeyed God, Adam and Eve at the Garden of Eden, they ate from the forbidden fruit and they disobeyed God willingly, all right? So we are lost, we lost our relationship with God and we have to face all the problems of a fallen world, okay? And then how it works, we receive revelation because God is it's a merciful God, okay? He looks at us and he feels pity for <laughs> the horrible state of humankind. And what he does, we receive revelation, even though we do not, we do not deserve it. We receive revelation from the apostles, from the prophets, okay? First from the prophets that receive direct, received direct communication from God and then later by the coming of Jesus Christ the Son of God in the flesh and also by the apostles who wrote the Bible okay so we have this revelation so we know what we have to do we have to believe we have to believe in the sacrifice of Jesus Christ at the cross 
as the Son of God who shed His blood for us. And then we have a reconnection with God. Okay? We have the Holy Spirit living inside us. We are in Christ. That's what the Apostle Paul says. We, are, we start to live in Christ, my friends. And what's our response? We trust and obey. We obey his commands, okay? It's very practical, okay? Christianity is very simple and very practical. It's hard to live, okay? It's hard to live the Christian life. It's, it, it's very hard because we still have the flesh, okay? The flesh will fight the inner man, the new creature, okay? The spirit. So we have to fight the flesh for all the days of our lives until we get to heaven and we get rid of the flesh because the flesh is sinful and it wages war against the spirit. Okay? That's how it works. But the, the spiritual man, my friends, he is complete. Okay? He's 100% ready to fight and to sanctify us. There's nothing lacking. Once you believe, you receive the Holy Spirit. You do not receive 1% of the Holy Spirit or 5%. You receive the whole, full glory of the Holy Spirit. The problem is that you are not letting Him work in you. Because you still have the flesh. Okay? So our fight is not to get more Holy Spirit. Our fight is to get less flesh okay is to open the doors of our mind and of our body or of, of our lives in order to for the Holy Spirit to work and we do that by prayer by reading the Bible okay and prayer for us is just you know we just talk to God just like you know you're talking to a father and what you do you, you participate in the life of this world. You help people. You connect with people. You have friends. Okay? You help, you know, in, in whatever way you can, depending on, on your circumstances. And what happens, my friends, is that as you obey, as you learn, the Holy Spirit will start to impart gifts and power in your life. Okay? The Holy Spirit was there all that time. But as you obey more and more, and you trust in faith in God, you know, He will manifest it, His presence inside you. Okay? You're going to do more good works. You're going to have more discernment. You're going to have joy. You're going to have peace. It really depends on the person. Each person has receives different gifts. Okay? Depending... On several factors like personality and the, the life that the person lived and the works that God has prepared for us. Okay? Because my works will be different from your works. Okay? So each of us, you know, is special for God and we have some different gifts, but the spirit is the same. And that's how it works. And that's why, that's why the Bible tells us over and over again to be patient. To be long-suffering. Because this is a process. It takes time. It takes your whole life. So you have to be patient. Okay? In order to fix your life, dedicate yourself to God, and then God will work through you. Okay? Over time. But what's Satan's lie? Satan does not want you to believe in this process. A very simple process. Okay? Okay? That I can explain to you in summary, in, in you know, 15 seconds. No, he wants, you know what he wants to say? He wants to say, my friends, that everybody somehow was connected to God. In the antiquity, you know, in the past. And they say, and, and I'm quoting here from a guy who is like the, the, the mentor of spiritual formation Thomas Merton he says the faith precedes religion you know it's it's just like everybody was connected to God somehow okay but people forgot so that's what they say this is basically 
occultism 101, okay? They say that once you were there with God, it's, it's just like Kabbalah, it's just like, um, you know, Kabbalah or Gnosticism or Buddhism, it's everything, all the other religions, they're exactly the same, okay? They say that you were there, part of God, and then somehow, you know, God sneezes it, and pff, all the, the droplets of... <laughs> of divine sparks, they, they just got scattered throughout the universe, and you are just one of them. And then they say, well, re religion comes, because people know that there's something missing, and they start to create fantasies, you know, and that's religion for them, okay? They say that religions are incomplete perceptions of the spiritual world. Are they, do you understand that? It's just like you have this feeling that something is wrong and then you create this fantasy. That's what they say, this fiction. All right? But all of them have some truth behind them. So we go again back to that story, you know, perennial philosophy, all that Gnostic lie that there is the light, there is the spiritual light behind all the religions. That's what they say. Okay? But they're incomplete, because you have rituals, you have the Bible, you know, you're not free. So what do you need to go back to God? You need mystical experiences. So you can go back to that primordial spirituality, you can reconnect it directly. You don't need the Bible, you don't need a church. You just, you know, have a mystical experience, just like the Buddha. Do you remember the Buddha? You sit, he sat under the tree, he went... What, what is the whole story of the Buddha? You know, he traveled the whole world looking for answers. All the answers, they didn't work. All the wisdom that, that he found didn't work. And then what happened after years and years and years, he just sat under a tree. And then it's like, you know, the divine enlightenment fell upon his head. You know, it's just like that. And that's what they say. People who do spiritual formation practices, they're doing exactly the same. They're expecting the same effects that the Buddha had under the tree. It's exactly the same thing. And then he was reconnected with, with the, the cosmic bubble, the, the, the cosmic God that they believe, this impersonal thing. The only difference is that people who do spiritual formation, they believe that it's God. The, it's a personal God, but the whole process is exactly the same. You know, that, that's what they, 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 they teach us. Then they reconnect with the cosmic bo divine bubble, and they realize that they are gods. All the religions of the world, apart from Christianity, they believe in this, okay? The only exceptions are Christianity and Islam, Okay? Even though inside the, 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 the Islam, there are Muslims who believe in this, the Sufi Muslims. And you know, it's interesting that Thomas Merton, the guy that, that, recreated, that recreated spiritual formation, he says that he's impregnated with Sufism, which is esoteric and mystical witchcraft Islam. <laughs> So you see, how, so, so there's this problem, Satan has this problem, how can he introduce this kind of lie, the Gnostic lie, inside the church? And he found the answer, it's a spiritual formation. Okay, and what is a spiritual formation? Basically, my friends, it's the idea that you can do some practices, Okay, you can meditate, you can do meditation, you can pray mantras, okay, and somehow you achieve a magical moment of silence when God will reconnect with you and you're gonna listen from God. Okay, so what they say, they teach you exactly the same practices that New Age, Hindus, and Buddhists they practice. You're gonna be silent. And you're going to start to pray in mantras. So you're going to say, you know, sometimes like, like Jesus help me, Jesus help me, Jesus, or, or, or words, they say, here I am, here I am. And they chose, you know, this here I am phrase because you say, 
you are saying I am, I am, which really means I am a God, because it's God Jehovah Himself who says I am. You know, so that's a way to, you know, a subtle way to say that that you are God, and you 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 keep repeating that for twenty minutes. Why do they do that in order for you to achieve a state of alpha brain waves? Okay, an altered state of conscience. That's what they do. You know, you just lose the control of your mind. Your God-given control of your mind. Because, because God is rational, is logical. And He has given us a rational mind to understand Him and to understand His commands. But what God, Satan, wants us to do is to lose this defense that we have, the natural defense that we have in our logical minds. It's just like taking drugs. Exactly the same thing. And do you remember in the last show we were talking about ayahuasca? About the drugs? And there was this occultist, this Buddhist, spiritist guy that he said, no, you know, taking uh, drugs is just a shortcut. You should really spend time meditating because you're going to achieve the same results. It's going to take longer, but it's going to be healthier. Because it's the same idea, you're going to lose control of your mind. And that's, that's what spiritual formation teaches. Okay, You stay there and you, you just pray for 20 minutes. Here I am, here I am, here I am. You know, until you lose all the, the, the sense. You know, words that stop meaning anything. It's just the sounds that matter. And you just become catatonic. You know, and then when you lose the, your defenses, you're ready to receive some spiritual contact. And I'll tell you, if it's not by the grace of God, you're going to receive a, a big Kundalini demon. That's what you're going to receive. You're not going to receive a word from God because you're disobeying Him. And the Bible says that God will not listen to prayers from people who are doing, who are in sin. And disobeying God is being in sin, basically. So, my friends, the guy that brought this into Christianity is called Thomas Merton. He is a monk, or used to be his dad now in hell. And uh, he really spread all these this, this ideas of meditation and everything among Catholics. But he has a disciple named Richard Foster. Richard Foster, uh, he, 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 he's a Quaker, okay? Quaker are mystical Christians. It's an apostate religion where people just, uh, you know, they, they, uh, they don't really believe in the Bible. They think that the gospel is not, is not enough. The Bible is not enough. So they just wait to have mystical experiences and shake you know that's why they are the Quakers and he's a Quaker and uh, and this guy he brought the same ideas of meditation and mantras and mystical experiences into the Protestant churches okay we're gonna talk more about them and uh, more quotations you know because there's a lot of quotations that you don't believe. It's like they, it's like total heresy, okay, blasphemy. And uh, so this this guy he he founded an institute called the Renovare Institute, which means basically renovate, start again, you know, start anew. Okay, the Renovare Institute is is basically. Uh, a place where they prepare materials in order to influence churches to adopt um, these teachings, this mystical Eastern religion, Buddhism, Hinduism teachings in the churches. And so they prepare books. There's a book that, that Richard Foster has written called The Celebration of Discipline, which is basically a spiritist, New Age, Buddhist book, full of blasphemies, okay? But they have some watered-down, sanitized materials that they, they use to introduce this thing in the churches, especially in Bible studies, youth groups, youth retreats, 
Okay? It's always, my friends, in places that are hidden, you know, from the pulpit. It's never, or it's never, should not, not say never, but it's no, you know, it's, it, it, they, they try to hide the thing, okay? It's not on the Sunday, the main Sunday service, the, the Sunday sermon, where everybody would listen to that. And of course, some, some mature Christians there would say, well, this is wrong. No, they hide the thing. You know, in youth, youth retreats, youth meetings, okay, Bible, Bible schools, where, you know, where there's just a few people there that can be influenced and nobody will know because people really, they don't, don't study their, their Bibles and they don't really study about other religions in order to understand what's wrong, okay? They just go to church, you know, cultural Christians could go there just to ease, ease their, their guilt, and just feel good thinking, well, I, I've done my duty with God this Sunday, so I'm okay. That's what, you know, you know how it is. And that's what they do. Okay? And they say that this comes from the Desert Fathers. The Desert Fathers are, you know, supposedly these Catholic monks who went to the desert. And they were looking for experiences, you know. And crazy people like living in caves and beating themselves flogging themselves in order you know they say that they, they wanted to fight the demons and that's not a wise thing to do <laughs> especially if you're not grounded on the bible and if you think that you're gonna do that by your will you're gonna get a beating from the demons because it's not you who fight the demons it's the power of the blood it's the power of the name of jesus christ and they w would go there and have all these mystical experiences. They would fast for days and days and, you know, and, until they had these mystical experiences. And they also loved people like Inaxius de Loyola, which is the founder of the occult Jesuit sect in the Catholic Church. You know, the murderers, they're murderers, they're liars. They, they, they murder like thousands upon thousands of people uh, protestants and they still hate the protestants even today it's it's the sect that the pope the false prophet pope belongs to the jesuits and you know what ignatius de loyola used to say you have to do the same thing meditation but you were you, you you had to flog yourself and you had to use like this barbed wire thing under your clothes in order to torture yourself all the time that's the kind of mysticism that they think it's good and they, they say it's Christian. Okay? Santa Teresa d'Avila, Saint Therese of Avila, she, she was uh, the, this also this nun and, uh, in Spain in the Middle Ages and she would have uh, you know, visions and ecstasies and all this kind of mystical experiences. She would, people would say that she would levitate so you understand, my friends, the kind of thing that you're bringing to the church. You know, there's a, a, a lot of other people, Harry Newman. But, you know, these are the, like the founders, the people that, that, that really, uh, you know, brought this thing, this thing into the church. Okay. And of course, the Desert Fathers, they didn't invent, create this thing. You know, they probably had contact with people from, from the East. Okay. Because this is basically Hinduism, all right? So this this goes back to the Babylon times, <laughs> actually, all right? And uh, but now we have people like Larry Crabb, yes, Larry Crabb, Rick Warren, America's pastor, very very wealthy person, very influential and powerful. We have people like Max Lucado who used to be a nice guy and now has become crazy, okay? So, my friends, I have a, a, I'm going to, I'm not going to spend lots of time in, in, in quotations here, because the quotations are, are crazy, you know? I, I, I'm, I'm going to give you some quotations, all right? So, for example, Thomas Merton, he said he was impregnated with Sufism, 
which is mystical Islam, and wanted to become as good a Buddhist as he could be. He believed that God's people lacked one thing, mysticism, and this is to what they need awakening. So this is basically new age. You know, you need to, it's Gnosticism, you need to wake up. You need to wake up to God and realize that you are God. That's what they say. All right? And uh, Richard Foster, you know, which is this guy who's regarded as a good Christian, he says, Thomas Merton has perhaps done more than any 20th century figure to make the life of prayer widely known and understood. Okay? Thomas Merton told once a New Age Episcopal, you know, beware of the Episcopal Church. It's a totally apostate church. Okay? You're going to go there and you're going to fall. Okay? Because Lucifer has taken over this church. Okay? Maybe with some exceptions. Maybe. I don't know. But, you know, go, go to a website. I was looking at a website of this Episcopal Church. St. Paul's Episcopal Church. And then you have, like, this guy who really looks like a Nephilim, okay? Very strange-looking guy. And he's, like, the main pastor there. I mean, he, main priest, all right, all right? And then he... They have the bio of those people there. And what, what it says there is that he received a grant, my friends, from the Lilly Foundation, the Lilly Foundation, you know, Eli Lilly, the pharmaceutical company, I mean, they support all kinds of occultic organizations. They're totally Luciferian. It's like 100%, okay? And this is the worst of all foundations in the, in the, the planet Earth. And he received a grant, money, money, from the Lilly Foundation, okay, for his church. And for his studies, you know, and all those guys that get money from the Lilly Foundation, you know, in order to destroy Christianity. And so you had this guy there, and they support gay marriage, they support abortion, they support everything that is bad. And they, are, of course, they also have female pastors. So, you know, under him, there are two female pastors, and one of them, she was there, she was there saying, oh no, you know, she loves. Uh, you know, yoga. It's like, you know, in, in her bio, it's like, I love motorcycles and yoga, you know. It, it was yoga and something else, I don't remember. But, you know, you have to choose two things to put in your bio, in the website of the church you work for, and you choose yoga. So you see how it is? This is the Episcopal Church, all right? Which is basically Anglican, which is basically Catholic, you know. So he said, Thomas Merton told New Age Episcopal priest Matthew Fox that he felt sorry for the hippies in the 60s because they were dropping LSD because all they had to do was practice the mystical contemplative stream to achieve the same results. <laughs> yes, he's right. You know, both altered states are the same and neither lead to God. It, this is another... It's a, this is another a way... You know, to, to refer, there's another way to say spiritual formation is contemplative prayer. Okay, that's the name of the prayer that they do. The, the whole notion of spiritual formation is, is wrong. As we said, the Holy Spirit is already 100% inside you. You don't have to do any formation in the Holy Spirit, it, it's ready. Okay, so they say it's, it's, uh, it's the contemplative prayer. And it's amazing, my friends. They have something they call the uh, formation, spiritual formation uh, directors. So you have a spiritual director. You have a guru now, okay? And you know, they have master degrees in spiritual direction. Can you believe that? You go there in a seminary and you have a master's degree in order to become a guru. Because what these guys do, basically, is to teach other people how to do those practices in the right way. Okay? So it's just like a guru, because in all, that's something that is common to all religions, all false religions, they say, you need a guru. 
you need someone who's more advanced spiritually than you you know there's this elitism there and in order to teach you how to to worship god and how to reconnect with god so now we have master's degree in being a guru and these guys they make a lot of money okay they make a lot of money they have jobs they have every, they have the easy life you know you have millions of people in the united states who are you know just struggling to have food on their table and these guys are making lots of money with this it's, it's really amazing and they have this very good uh, partnership with something called the Shailen Institute in Washington DC which is basically a Buddhist Christian Institute that te also teaches contemplative spirituality yes that, that's what they do that's what they do okay in celebration of discipline Richard Foster tells us we must be willing to go down into the recreating in recreating silences into the inner world of contemplation it's 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 absolutely crazy my friends it's absolutely crazy okay and you see it, we we are being attacked by all sides because do you remember we were talking about the the healing the the, the music healing frequency healing the other day two shows you know uh, this month and we were talking about this and Richard Foster, he says, spend some time this week listening to contemplative music designed to quiet you, settle and deepen you. So, so it's the music, okay, that gives you peace. It's not Jesus. And my friends, uh, it's crazy. I'm going to talk about this in deep in our next show, okay, because there's a lot, lots of quotations here that show that they're deep into occultism and basically they're luciferians they're luciferians okay but today i want to talk more about i want to focus on the differences more the the, the you know the philosophical the theological differences between those two different worldviews they're two different perspectives okay okay so i, I have some notes here I think that the that the big difference, my friends, is that you know Christianity it, it it really puts us in a passive passive mode. Okay, you're not passive regarding you know the works that you have to do once you receive Christ, but the way you receive Christ is passive. It's like God comes down from heaven to man. You are in a position of submission. Do you understand that? And they say the contrary, they're Gnostics, okay? They look for the Gnostic inner light. So they say you have to find the light of God inside you. And you have to do rituals and have mystical experiences in order to climb the ladder and go to God. So it's basically an active way of reaching God. Christianity says, no, you're passive. You receive revelations, you only accept. Your work is to accept that revelation by faith. But the Gnostics and the people in the spiritual formation movement, they say it's the contrary. You have to be active. Okay? It's all about your, it's the self. It's all about pride, my friends. You have to find your inner light. You have to realize that you, you have that, that divine spark inside you. And the only way for you to, to really get in contact with the divine spark is to be very in silence, you know, you have to be very careful with that that quiet time thing, okay? Because it's the quiet time idea, the misuse, I would say, of the quiet time that led to this situation you have now. Because it's great to have a time to concentrate and to, to really meditate in the Christian sense in the word of God without distractions. But you can talk to God anywhere. In fact, the Bible tells us to pray without ceasing seizing so you have to pray all the time and when you're driving and there people are honking the, the horns all around you you have to pray you know at work I'll, I'll tell you i pray a lot when you know i see there's something wrong this person is really behaving strange and he's talking and i'm praying okay so basically my friends that's the pride that spiritual pride that you have to be active 
that you have to do something in order to contact God, okay? Because what's the difference? What is Christian prayer? Christian prayer basically is supplication, meaning you, you ask for things. You ask, because when you ask, you put yourself in submission, in subordination, okay? You know that good things come from God, so you put yourself in a submissive position. So you ask things for you know to God. Thanksgiving again because you know all good things come from God. Confession of sins. Right? And uh, we have praise. We praise God for who he is. But those guys know that that's that's not they, they don't believe in that. You know, they don't believe in the Bible because you know Jesus <laughs> the disciples came to Jesus and said, How should we pray? Jesus Christ could have said, you know, you just be still, you know, be in silence, and then that's how you pray when you connect to God. Because people like Larry Crabb, they say, you know. That, that common prayer like Jesus taught us, you know, our Father who art in heaven, this is a discourse, this is a conversation, okay, that's how you pray. But Larry Krebs says, no, traditional prayer is like a postcard from a distant friend. It's like, you know, he says like, you know, he, it's just a postcard. He says he's a very good friend of yours, but he only, you know, you get only this, this small picture of him. It's nothing, it's not really... You're not in contact with that person. So, so he's really uh, denying the power of prayer. Saying that the prayer, like Jesus taught us, is not worth anything. So you see how the devil works? He wants to destroy the most powerful tool, the most powerful way that we have to change things and to grow spiritually, which is prayer, conversational prayer. Larry Crabb. Don't you think, my friends, that Jesus would have taught us to pray this way? And they love to use that, 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 that you know, that, that psalm where it says, Be still and know that I'm God. But it's, it's a psalm, my friends, that says, you know, start fighting. Stop fighting. Stop fighting and trying to do things by yourself. You know, just be still. Stop striving, Okay. And then you will know that I'm God because I'm going to work in your life. That's what it means. It's exactly the contrary that what they say. Because they say, no, you have to be still. You have to be silent. And they say that, you know, this be still means that you have to do contemplative prayer. But when you do contempt contemplative prayer, you are striving. You are trying to take things into your own hands. And do things, you know, by your own power. It's exactly the contrary of what the verse says. Okay? And then they do their mantras. Okay? It doesn't matter that Jesus said, do not, you know, practice vain repetitions. Because, you know, they just don't care about the Bible. That's the whole idea. Let's bypass the Bible. Whatever Jesus says in the Bible it doesn't matter. What matters is that this f makes me feel closer to God. This makes me feel good. I feel some peace. And I have told you many times that Satan has the power to give you, for a short time, some, some emotional feelings. This is very common. It's very common. Just read any kind of a book from a New Ager and you'll see that they really feel that. They, they, sometimes they feel peace. Sometimes they feel a bliss. It's very common. That's the way that he deceives people, but it doesn't last long and it will lead you to hell. Okay? My friends, what does the Bible say? You have to gird the loins of your mind. You have to protect your mind. That's that's what it means. Okay? You gird the loins of your mind. It means you protect your mind. Because that's how God works in our lives. You know, he changes our minds. It's the renewing of the mind that the Bible talks about. 
until you have the mind of Christ. You start to see things like they are. You have discernment. But if you refuse to use the mind that God has given you, your mind will deteriorate. And you're going to be a prey for this kind of feelings that Satan can give you. And sometimes you yourself can deceive yourself. It's a psychological thing. It's, it's a self-hypnosis. Okay? It's hypnosis. All right? I, I, I'm, I'm there and I, you know, I start to, 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 to recite this mantra over and over and over and over again until I have this kind of feeling. It's a self-induced hypnosis. And I'll tell you, if it's hypnosis, you should be glad. Because, you know, it's better than, 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 than be a direct demonic influence, which is the case many times. All right? And that's it, my friends. Another thing is that Jesus said, you know, you have to carry your cross. You know, you have to realize that this world is lost, is falling. It's a disaster. Sin is a disaster. But those guys, they say, no, everything is okay. It's like Oprah. You know, <laughs> you just feel good. You were born to be a winner. You were born, you know, just to feel good. You were born to be, you know, to have all the peace and contact with God anytime you want. You know, we have this trick here. All right? So, so it really takes you away from reality. From reality. Because the Christian is, you know, we have to be sober. Again, sober. We have to, what it is to be sober is not be hysterical. You have to look the world, you know, and face the problems and realize that, you know, we have, we are in deep problems, <laughs> okay? And that's it, my friends. I'm going to stop for a minute here and we will be back after the commercial break. You are listening to the Kapow Radio Show Network. Kapow stands for Kingdom Against Powers of Wickedness. Kapow is sponsored by Fifth Hook Media, a digital publisher of ebooks. FifthHookMedia.com has a selection of ebooks about spiritual warfare and Christian living. Visit FifthHookMedia.com. That's F I F T H O O K Media.com. Remember, that's FifthHookMedia.com. F I F T H O O K. Kapow! Welcome to the Brother Marcos program on the Kapow Radio Show Network. We pray that you have eyes to see and ears to hear. Are you serious? All right, my friends, we are back and uh, we have some more food for thought here. Okay, before you start playing with fire and you start doing mystical Eastern practice in order to feel closer to God, I want to warn you and give you some food for thought here. And I have this list here. Okay, it goes from one to six. Number one, what's the source? of the contemplative prayer and spiritual formation movement. It's basically Hinduism. It's Buddhism. It's New Age. It's Prana Yoga. Because you know why? Because they do some, some uh, breathing exercises before they, they start their prayers. They say this is a centering prayer. Okay? You start to do some deep, you know, uh, breathing. This is, my friends, exactly prana yoga okay because they say when you do this breathing you have the energy of the universe the mystical energy of the universe entering your body and this will help you to connect with god with the you know the spiritual beings and everything and this comes from buddhism that's what they do i mean, I mean it's, it's not one exercise of buddhism it's the foundation of buddhism and hinduism they say you cannot have spiritual development without meditation. It's, it's like 99% of what they do. The rest is 1%. Uh, the, the rest, you know, the, the other 1% is yoga. So it's just like we Christians say, in order to be saved, you have to believe in the cross. They will say, in order to be saved or spiritually developed, 
you have to do meditation. You know, it's their way of salvation. So the roots, my friends, are completely occult, occultic, and satanic. Completely. And Ephesians 4 says, do not give opportunity for the devil. And that you are opening a huge door for the devil in your life. Because you are thinking that, you know, people for 3,000 years are praying in the wrong way. Who are you to challenge this? 1,000 years before Christ, David was praying in a conversational way. He was talking to God as a father. Jesus prayed this way. All the apostles prayed, prayed this way. Talking in a conversation. And then you are here. And you think, you know, that your you know, poor, nothing seminary in the back country of the United States has found the answer that everybody during 3,000 years were wrong and now you have the answer and you're going to teach this for the whole world? This is pride. This is, this is a pretentious, ridiculous action. You're nothing. Go back to the Bible. Repent. Read from what, what Jesus taught us. You're opening, opening a door for the devil. And the devil will ruin your life. Your testimony, your sanctification, it's gone. Gone. And sometimes, my friends, people, they destroy their souls. There is a person here. Her name is uh, Sue Monk Kidd. She used to be a Sunday school teacher in South Carolina. I mean, that's the Bible Belt. I think she was a missionary at, at a time. And then she started doing this contemplative prayer. I think she made a deal with the devil. She sold her soul. And now she's writing books on contemplative prayer. And she's denying the Bible. I'll tell you. I'll, I'll read some quotes from her book in our next show and you're going to see she used to be a Sunday school teacher and now he's, she's going to hell because she's dealing with occultism number two there's pride elitism selfishness and division okay because you think you know like those people say here Richard Foster I don't know if it's Richard Foster or Thomas Meridon. It doesn't matter. He used to talk about the Mount Everest of the soul. You know, if you do this kind of meditation and contemplative prayer, you're going to reach the Mount Everest of the soul. So, you know, if you're a child, you know, the Bible says exactly the contrary. What Jesus used to say, that you, we had to be like children. That the kingdom of, of God belonged to children. And children, they don't know the practices. They don't know, you know, the techniques. But these guys, they say, no, if you want to reach the Mount Everest of the soul, if you want to be in the pinnacle, you, if you want to be the greatest Christian of all, you have to master the techniques. It's exactly the contrary of the prayer of a child who trusts the father so shame on you Richard Foster you are you are an agent of Satan that's what you are and your doctrine comes straight from hell you know that's pride that's basically spiritual pride my friends it's just like those new agers who think oh those are stupid christians i know so much more about the spiritual world than they do they just you know they just pray there that's it's you know they over and, and and nothing works for them they're poor they don't have money you know they don't i they don't experience astral projection they don't talk to spiritual guys there you know they just read that bible over and over and over you know the how stupid they are i am the best this is spiritual pride they're the elite 
And they are selfish because it's all about them. It's all about what's the next step in my climbing to Mount Everest of spirituality. What's the next step today? Because I'm great. I'm this great climber. I'm so developed. And this causes division, my friends, because once this goes inside the church, you know, what happens is that people will realize the problem and some people will be seduced and there will be a division inside the church. It's an atomic bomb that Satan created to destroy the churches. And it's working. It's working. You know, I would like to give a Sunday school Bible study, like uh, get on the phone and call your brother who's in need and who needs a word of encouragement. That would be a good Sunday school Bible study. You know, but no, this, you know, nobody wants to do that. They want to think about their, 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 self, their self development, their self pride, their self growth. It's all about self, self, self. Number three, it's an attack on rationality and logic. Okay? And this is very important, my friends, because Christianity is based on the book. It's based on the Bible. And I have told you this over and over. Satan's main goal is to destroy our trust in the Bible. If he can do that, Christianity will fall down, will be destroyed. He won. Because God will not allow it, but he's trying. And he's having some success in the lives of many, many people. Because once, my friends, you start, you know, like all, the, all these contemplative prayer people here, all this spiritual formation directors here, they say the same thing, that the revelation is incomplete, that the real revelation is the one that you hear from God. It's just like Ted Cruz's wife, Heidi, you know, crazy woman who was, you know, didn't you know all that she ran away from home 10 years ago and she was like the police found her in a fetal position like by a highway suicidal and the, <laughs> the policeman had to take her home but he was very concerned because he thought that she was going to commit suicide so you know personal revelation is, is not only on pair it's not only equal to bible revelation but it's more important that's what they say. I mean, this is an open door for being deceived by the devil. Basically, all the false religions say the same thing. Open your mind and contact your spiritual guides. All the religions. Santeria says, says contact your Orisha. Buddhism says, you know, contact the spiritual masters. Hinduism says, contact the avatars. It's all the same thing. Spiritism says, contact your old grandpa because he has wisdom and he's going to teach you things. Isn't that the way it works? It is. Okay? And emotions, well, you have to feel good about it. You know? Because sometimes when you read the Bible, it's bitter. Because it brings, you know, conviction and conviction in order you know to bring repentance but but it's bitter sometimes you read something there in the bible that you don't like and you're gonna feel bad for a couple of days because god wants to change you so it's not like the bible is you know i'm gonna use the bible because i'm gonna feel good because everybody wants to feel good that's why they have this music rock and roll music in the concerts inside the churches and everything it's just to give you a feeling you are buying peace of mind on Sunday, you know, just to move you th from from Monday to, to Saturday. That, that's what they do. Number four, very, very serious. This is the link to the one world religion, my friends. Any pagan can do this. This is going to be the link. And the, the Pope is already doing this. Can't you see? It's like everybody can get in touch with love. The Pope will say, he will not say it's the Gnostic inner divine spark. He will say it's love. Meditate. Do the spiritual exercise and you're going to get in touch with love. And you see how all those guys, Thomas Merton, Henry Nguyen, Santa Teresa d'Avila, the Desert Fathers, they are all Catholic. 
Because that's how they want to bring people back to the church. They will have the candles. Some people, they, when people, when they meditate, they light up incense, which is exactly what the Buddhists do. They light up incense. They start looking for a candle. And you know that looking for a candle is a, is a thing that witches do in order to, to get to the altered state of conscience and become demonically possessed and channel spirits. And these are things that I use it in Catholic churches, in Buddhist temples, so you have a connection. Because you don't need really to talk about Jesus Christ. If a person thinks, well, I can do this meditation and I can get in contact with God, why would I need the cross? I'm not saying that Christians believe that, okay? But all the other people will believe that. And weak Christians and people who are going to church but they have not been saved, they will believe that. And this, this blood will be in the hands of the pastors who are teaching this. Because they're leading these people astray, even though maybe they, they really don't believe in that, but they are giving the example. And we're going to see the one world religion is going to be Gnosticism. And it's going to be based on mystical experiences and rituals. I have been telling you this for two years now. Five, it's an attack on faith in the promises of the Bible. Because, my friends, one of the most important things that we have to do in order to develop ourselves as Christians to be sanctified, our process of sanctification, of becoming more like Christ, is to develop our faith. And we develop our faith by reading the promises of God in the Bible and trusting them in our lives. Even though the circumstances are against us, we trust in God. Because without faith it's impossible to please God. And this is against faith. I want signs. That's what they say. I want signs right now. I want the feeling. Because without the feeling I cannot trust. If I'm not feeling well, well, I need the feeling. I need the experience. Number six. It's an attack on the reality of the presence of the Holy Spirit. Okay? Okay? It's a finished job. Henry Nguyen was to say, used to say, no, we need to develop the Holy Spirit inside us by this kind of contemplative prayer. No! You are denying the Holy Spirit inside you. So you know what happens? Okay, You have a lack of sanctification. You stop growing. Okay, You stop growing. You, you become an ineffective Christian if you do this. Okay? And my friends, I'll tell you, the Bible is very literal. It's literal. You, you know, you, God has written and we read it and we learn. Only eight people heard from God in the Old Testament apart from the prophets. It's Noah, Job, it's uh, Solomon, it's David, just a few people. It's not like all the people in the Old Testament were like listening, you know, having messages from God. Just eight people. And in the New, New Testament, only seven. You see how this is completely alien from the Bible? It's completely alien. Okay? Because that's not the way that God talks to us. He talks about, you know, the gifts, the conviction. Okay? You know, the feeling, the, the, the feelings, the, the, the thoughts that come to our mind. You know, sometimes God tells us, this is wrong. This is wrong. Pay attention to this. You know, this is not right. Okay? And we start, as we grow in our spiritual life, we become more sensitive to this. Okay? Without contemplative prayer. Sometimes I'm talking to a person and I can feel there's something wrong with that person. And then I start to pray. Or sometimes I have this conviction that I have to do something. God is putting this conviction in my heart. That's the way that the, the you know the gentle way that the Holy Spirit talks to us all the time. Okay. 
even when when we are awake i mean mostly when you we are awake all right so that's it my friend you are a soldier it's just like you are a soldier fully equipped okay you have all the equipment you have your rifle you have your boots you have your helmet and there's a war there and this really makes me mad because you have everything that you need the bible says that that you know that talks about itself the bible you know it's enough for all kinds of work you know for 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 rebuking for preaching for everything i'm paraphrasing the verse here here but you know you know the verse you know, so you have all the instructions about the fight, about the battle. You have all the equipment. But instead of going to the fight, especially helping other people, you know, I'm going to meditate. I need to get in contact with God. I need to, you know, sit here in a lotus position and start, you know, to, to recite mantras and, um, 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 you know, because I want to feel connection. Instead of going to battle. That's why we're ineffective. That's why the culture is the way it is. That's why politics is the way it is. It's why, that's why people hate each other and are killing each other in traffic and things like that. Because the soldier is not going into the battle. Okay? My friends, you can check the Bible. There are no inner voices in the Bible. When people want that people when God wanted people to do something, he would send an angel or he would talk to that person audibly. And people always knew it was God who was talking to them. There was no doubt. And, you know, sometimes it was not a good feeling. People would fall flat on their face and say, I want to die because I'm a person of unclean lips. I'm a sinner. I don't want to die because I've seen, you know, the glory of God. And I'm not worthy. So not the, not a peaceful not not you know this Buddhist peace spirit experience you know it a slap on the face it's a punch on the nose crazy thing alien alien to the Bible okay alien to the Bible and I'll tell you my friends most of these people they don't have problems in their lives or they have small problems because when you have problems when you have serious problems. When you, when you don't know how you're going to pay your bills, oh, my friends, you're going to talk to God in a very clear way. You're going to say, Jesus, help me. Jesus, help me. Jesus, my kid is sick. Please heal him. Jesus, my, my brother is in, in prison. Please help him. Jesus, my, 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 you know, my husband is taking drugs. Please, Jesus, do something. When you have a real problem, my friends, that's the way you pray. But you know, when you don't have problems, you know, your life is okay, you're living from the system, then you have time to start experience these things. And that really makes me mad. Yes, my friends, the consequences are very, very ser serious. Because if you're not a Christian, I think this is... This is the summary. That's what I'm, the main message that I want to leave with you. If you are not a Christian, what happens is that you're going to think that you can have a spiritual life without repentance. You know, without the cross, without repentance from sins. Just enjoy meditation because, you know, everybody can do it. The Buddhists can do it. The Hindus can do it, the New Agers can do it, and I can do it too. So I go to church, and I have, you know, my, my quiet time, my, my occult quiet time at home. All right? Let's, let's make a difference here. You can have a quiet time, and it can be a good thing, okay? As long as you don't really focus on the ritual, okay? But for some people, it works. Okay? But if you, if you th really think that you can do your meditation r exercises, your breathing, okay, then you don't need a, the cross. And maybe you're going to go to that church over and over ag again, every Sunday. Maybe you're going to participate in the, in the you know, uh, you know the, the, the cantata, the chorus, 
the, the theater, the, the volleyball, you know, the ta Christian tacos. You're going to make Christian tacos at the cafeteria. And you will never be saved. Never. I think this is the most uh, important problem here. Okay? And if you are already a Christian, you, you know, you can stop your sanctification process and the work of the Spirit because basically you are refusing. You are denying the Spirit. You are grieving the Spirit. And so the Spirit will stop working. You know, God says, well, you don't, don't want, want to grow. You don't want to follow the Bible. You do whatever you want to do. Okay? And then you, it's, it's over. Your sanctification process is over. And if you're really, really stubborn, there are some discussions. I know some people believe that you can lose your salvation. You can even lose your salvation. It's just like Sue Monk Kid, the former Sunday school preacher. Another problem that I see here is that Christians become self-centered, egotists. Okay? They will, they will start living in an ivory tower. You know, just like... Do you remember I was talking about that, that Hindu guy that just said one day he was like 40 or 45 and he told his family, now I'm going to meditate and dedicate myself to Brahma, to the god Brahma of Hinduism. And then he, he went inside his, his room and started to meditate and he never said a word until the day he died. And he never talked to his family. He never worked anymore. He never said a word to his wife or his children because he was meditating. Okay? This is selfishness. That's not why we are here on this earth. We are here on this earth to interact with people. To love people. You cannot love someone without, you know, doing things. Okay? Helping that person. Interacting with them. If you're going to love your wife, you're going to stand by her. You're going to talk to her. You're going to love your children. You have to instruct them. You have to provide for them. You have to, to hug them. Kiss them. That's how you love people. It's not by going inside your room like that Hindu guy and start meditating without talking to anybody else until the day you die. You know? This destroys the purpose of Christian living. Completely. Completely. Of course, Christians will not go to that extreme. Of course, I'm giving you you know, some kind of hyperbole. Hyperbole. Is that how it's said? What you might call it in English? Hyperbole. When you exaggerate something in order to make a point. But you get my point. You don't need to enter your room and stay there forever. You know, it's enough that you really, you, you don't talk to anybody else. You don't call someone you need. You know, you have, you really don't help your friends. That, that's enough. That's the same, you know, result actually and uh, Christians don't need the Bible to grow that's another consequence which is very it, it's a big problem because if I can have a direct revelation from God and if I can have peace and a feeling of well-being why would I go to the Bible? Think about it. Why would I spend time in the Bible, which sometimes is hard to understand and to learn? You have to think about it. You have to meditate in the Christian sense. The Christian sense, meditation, is thinking about something. It's the contrary. Okay? Because meditation in the Hindu sense is not thinking about anything. Alright? It's emptying your mind. It's, it's having an empty mind, okay? But why would I spend time with the Bible, which is a lot of work, if I can get immediate results with meditation? So you see the temptation here? So in order, I, I'd like in order to finish this, this program, which I, I think is one of the most important that we have ever, ever broadcast here, in the Kapal Radio Network and Radio Redemption in Power Network. I'll, I'll leave you with some Bible verses. Philippians 4. Okay? Be careful for nothing, but in everything by prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known unto God. 
and the peace of God which passes all understanding shall keep your hearts and minds through Christ Jesus. So you see, my friends, in everything by prayer and supplication and thanksgiving, let your requests be made known to God. Ask God. Talk to God. That's how the Bible teaches us to pray. And then the peace of God will keep your heart and mind. So you see, the Holy Spirit that is inside you will give this peace. It's not a, it's not a mystical experience. It's a conversation. Okay. Okay. Another thing. Why, why you know, we're, we don't see God right now. It's obvious. It's obvious because we are in the fallen world. We are still in the flesh. Flesh and blood cannot cannot be in heaven. The Bible tells us this. Okay? And see here what Paul says in 1 Corinthians 13. For now we see through a glass darkly, but then face to face. Now I know in part, but then shall I know even as also I am known. We're going to see God face to face one day. Now we have to trust. That's what faith is all about. That's why you cannot see God right now. Because God really likes, likes faith. He does. Hebrews 11. Hebrews 11. It's all about faith. Faith, faith, faith. Okay? It's all about faith because here it is. Here it is. Okay? But without faith, it's impossible to please Him, to please God. For he that comes to God must believe that He is and that He is a rewarder of them that diligently seek Him. God puts a lot of importance on faith, my friends. It's all about faith. So don't take a shortcut. This is a shortcut that will destroy your faith. You're looking for signs. You're looking for experiences. Okay? What did, what did, I'll leave you with this last verse from Jesus Christ himself in Mark 8. And he sighed deeply in his spirit saying, you know, he sighed deeply. It's like, oh, oh, I'm tired of this. And said, why does this generation seek after a sign? Verily I say unto you, there shall no sign be given unto this generation. Do you want to go? Do you want to receive this curse? You know, Jesus Christ does not like people who look for signs all the time. He doesn't like, he likes people who have faith. So don't take a shortcut. Don't take a shortcut. This is poison. Okay? Uh, thank you very much. We're going to we're going to continue with this subject next week because it's so important. But I thank you for attention. This has been a difficult, complicated show, but it's very important. Thank you very much for your attention. And I pray that God will give you much, much discernment and blessings this week. Bye-bye. Fifthhookmedia.com right now. Go to fifthhookmedia.com right now. Go to fifthhookmedia.com right now. Go to fifthhookmedia.com right now.